boom coming in hot chichi what's going on brother what's up brother it's world series eve and let's go behind yes. the curtain real quick yes I, we started talking before and i forgot i looked down and sean was on fire just now and i go hey bud i'm not recording i am so I am bro so so give us a chance to work on the things we talk yes. about all the time failure is feedback we're the buffaloes okay. bro we're running right for that storm let's go we'll do it again all right let's do it okay and i'm very excited about this topic and i already know what sean's gonna say <laughs> i've had goosebumps for the last 20 minutes but here we go it is world series <clears throat> eve okay sean casey hits what five 529 529 in the world couple, series couple for, bombs for the yeah. Detroit well, Tigers. couple bombs incredible. couple doubles incredible. yep incredible okay so <laughs> drove in half the team's runs just throwing that in there too <laughs> there you go <laughs> which right, that's so. that's why we lost the world series <laughs> <laughs> no but you, you dominated that world series so here's what we're gonna do right now and I'm very excited about this Sean Casey woke up the, Bryce Harper woke up this morning it's a day yeah. before the World Series. Yeah. Justin Berlander woke up. It's a day before the World Series. Yeah. Sean Casey, back in the day, woke up the day before the World Series that he was going to play in. What? Take us, take us inside the mind of what it's like the day before the World Series. Bro, it's literally like Christmas Eve. Literally. I mean, it's funny to even think about this. It's literally like Christmas Eve. It's like, <clears throat> it's the most incredible thing ever because... This was my ninth year in the big leagues. I've been waiting my whole life for this. And, and another thing was, Chinch, I had gotten hurt in the ALDS against Oakland game one. I tore my tore That's all right. the fascia in my calf. <clears throat> so I was, I needed every, you know, we had six days off. I needed every day, every single day to get wow. back. So yeah. it was incredible. So I wouldn't even have played in the World Series had it, <clears throat> had the Cardinals and Mets knock on seven games and wow. you know we yeah so I was very very fortunate so I knew I was playing which I was grateful for because I because when I first got hurt in Oakland I was thinking oh my god here I am my ninth year in the big leagues we got a shot to go to the World Series and I'm gonna be freaking hurt like I, and so I wasn't a hundred percent they had to really tape my calf and all like that but I was like I'm playing so yeah. I could I knew I wasn't gonna play first but I knew I was gonna DH man I, I'll tell you what the day before you just got the jitters the 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 the, the, the um Butterflies. It's incredible. Well, I got incredible butterflies, but the atmosphere in the air in Detroit <clears throat> was amazing, dude. It was it was incredible. Like you could just feel it everywhere you went. As a matter of fact, I got a great story. I was just thinking about this. I went out. I went out and uh, with the kid. Took the kids to the park. You know, Andrew and Jake. They're probably four and three at the three and two at the time. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, Andrew had just turned. No, he, had, he was four, and Jake was three. And uh, I'm coming back from the park, and my son Andrew's in his car seat in the back, and so is Jake. And my son Andrew's like, hey, man, I, Dad, I got to go to the bathroom. I'm like, one or two, one or two, because that matters. One or two you, one or two matters at that point, you know, because yeah. if it's one, you can pull the car over and say, hey, go in that bush right there. If it's two, you're like, we got a freaking, we got a situation here, right? So he's like, number two. I'm like, all right, bro. So, bam, I got to go put the, get, put the um, you know, the car and hit pedal the gas. The metal. Bam, pedal to the metal, bro. And I'm about six <laughs> blocks from home. So, I'm going to say I'm not flying, but I'm going. If it's a 25, I'm going 40, 45. I probably shouldn't be going that fast. But I'm like, I, I don't want him dropping a bomb in my car. <laughs> so, so, I'm like, bam, about three blocks in, Chinch. Bam, I see a cop. No ways back then where it shows you the things. Oh, you know what I mean? No. Bam, cop pulls me over. I'm like, oh, man. I'm like, this isn't good. Like, all I can think of. Just give me the ticket as quick as you can because my kid's going to poop his pants. <laughs> <clears throat> so the officer comes out the window. He's like, he's like, and I'm like, so, so sorry, officer. My son said he's got to go number two. I'm trying to get home. He's like, Sean Casey. I'm like, no hey, way. what's going on? What's I'm like, what's going on, officer? <laughs> no way. He's like, bro, we're so fired up for the World Series tomorrow. This town's buzzing. We're, I'm having a party at my house. All I'm thinking is my son's going to crap his pants by the time this <laughs> cop's done telling the story. But he's like, we're, we're fired up. He's like, man, have a great day. Good luck tomorrow. I'll be rooting for you. You know, you know, obviously no ticket. He walked off. I'm like, that's incredible. That's so but cool. that was the vibe, dude, in, in Detroit at that time. Was if you were getting crazy, like walking around town? Like, dude, the city people, was like, crazy. The buzz was, uh, yeah, it was just the buzz was everywhere, man. Anywhere you went, you know, it was just like, 
you know, it was like, it's a wonderful life. Hey, have a good, uh, have a good one, Mr. Casey. Go get him, Sean. <laughs> Yo, hey. Like the Truman hey. Show? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, 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 Truman show. yeah it was incredible. It was incredible. <laughs> That's so, cool. so, dude, it was unbelievable. And then, you know, the, the next day, though, when you get there, man, and 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 you know it's, 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 it's the day of the World Series, even for a guy like Bryce Harper. Hey, Bryce Harper's in the same boat. He's played, what, 11 years? And he's never played in the World Series. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's not easy to get there. So, you know, he, you know, what... what that that morning of the World Series, did I remember driving to the yard? You know, I think one thing about the tickets, you got all these. The, the, the tickets are different because during the season, you just write on the list, right? During the World Series, you got to order, like you got to make sure you know who's coming and order the 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 se every seven games for the people and get it to them. So that's another factor that was in there. And then, and then when but when you get to the yard that day, bro, and you go out to batting practice, you feel because you're the you're the only game in town. You're the last. Wait, let me go back to the tickets quick. Like, did, yeah. were there people that hit you up for tickets? You're like, really? I haven't talked to you in 16 years, bro. Like, oh yeah, dude. There's people. Really? I, you know what? I was people hit me up for tickets out of the blue. I'm like, uh, dude, you're my second grade like math teacher. I was like, I haven't talked to you, freak. I haven't talked to you since second grade. That's the stuff. You know what I mean? It was incredible. It was incredible. I, but but you know, you leave as many tickets as you can for the people that you love and all that stuff. So yeah. that's cool too because they can share in that moment. But dude, when you get out to batting practice that day. It's national media, man. There's, it's national, right. you know. It's national, so yeah, you're out you're there. You're Detroit, like, so that's not like it's not like playing for the Red Sox or the Yankees. Yeah, that, that must have been new. Was that new to you, or were you at Boston before that? Uh, no, I was in Boston afterwards. Yeah, no, dude, it was oh, really. So it was you really, probably were like, "What are all these people doing in our locker?" Well, room? yeah, it was. Yeah, locker room on the shit? field. Did you have to sign a yeah. bunch of shit, like too. Uh, well, mm -hmm. we, just, just for, you, you signed for you know, you're signing like champagne bottles and <laughs> and and other stuff. I have some stuff somewhere. Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, what do we got? There we go. World Series hat, baby. No way. Yeah, look, they give you they give you the emblem, 2006 World Series. Wait, so is that the hat you put on after yeah, you won the championship series? Oh, see, I feel better. We didn't do this. But when I, look at it. Look at it. Look, look, look at this. I have right here. See the oh, see the ball be easy. You can't see it, but what I have it. What was written there that you blacked out there? What was written there? Something gross that you can't show your kids or something, or you just crossed? I have no idea. No, no. I think I think it was... But I, no, what's crazy is, you know, everyone writes things in their hats, like most players, okay. to remind yourself. So I had see the ball be easy was my cue oh, for hitting. Cool. Oh, I'm so yeah. glad we did this. I'm so glad let we did this. Let me see if this fits me. Oh, my God. My head's grown, bro. What? Oh, no, it's not. It's, Dude, it's, you look it's like still, a tiger right now. Let's go, great. baby. Yeah, all right. Let's keep, this hat. let's keep this hat on. You know, this is the World Series. This is where you get the mojo, bro. I, now I feel the power, Chinch. Now I <laughs> wait, feel the so, power. Wait, is I that feel the like hat freaking... that they, they handed you on the field when you won the I feel like I feel like, when, I feel like when Iron Man puts his helmet on. That's what I feel. <laughs> yeah, this is my hat, dude. This is the hat I wore in the World Series. Incredible. I, I, I don't know where I found oh, this. I think oh. I found it the other day. Well, that's weird. That makes me feel better about not recording earlier because we didn't do this part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right, wait. So, wait, wait, wait. Let's keep going through it. So... Yeah. Now you're 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 at the ballpark. It's 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 like were you scared? Like I, well, you were DHing, right? You DH. No, dude, I was DHing, but but yeah, that dude, was you, I, that I, I wasn't, a little scared, I wasn't scared. I wasn't a little bit. Yeah, dude, I, I'd just I'm be not scared to make an error. I'd be scared Bro, to make an error in the world. It's it's incredible you say that. I must admit, as a first baseman, you do think about the Bill Buckner play. Oh my and, God, and, and, no, I didn't it, even it, think about bro, that. It just, uh, it makes you think like, I hope I don't make a play well, in plus, this series. Plus you're involved in almost every play. You're one of the only Dude, people. as a first base. a catcher and a pitcher are the only people that really <laughs> it, are in, it, 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 you can't fuck it, up. You can't. It's a, it's incredible. Up. And I was, so I, when I was DH in game one, I was kind of like, yes, no, this is perfect. No, and, and dude, so two stories here. Um, before I tell you about the opening day announcement of the lineups, I want to go to game three in St. Louis because game three, I was, I had to play in the field because it was, it was a national league. You know, now you don't have to with the, with the university of the H, but back then you had to play in the field. So I had to play in the field game three. Wait, what was it? 2006, <clears throat> right? 2006, bro. I'm not kidding you. That Buckner play and doing something uh, like that makes you uneasy. Uh, Cause you're like, man, I just don't want to do something that blows a game uh, in the world series. Uh, you know what I mean, uh, so, <clears throat> so what's crazy is, First inning, game one, bottom one. Uh -huh. Freaking the Cardinals load the bases. Oh and I'm like, oh. oh and Carlos Guillen, for whatever whatever time, whatever reason at the time, as a shortstop, he 
could, he would throw me picks all the time. Like I, oh I must have picked a, I picked a million balls that Dressing year. Me out so much, dude. Right so listen to this. <laughs> Chopper up the middle. And now don't don't forget, I got the Bill Buckner <clears throat> play in my head. Like, just don't make a mistake, right? And the bases loaded. Oh. Chopper up the middle. Gian makes an unbelievable play to his left, <laughs> and all I'm thinking, <laughs> and as a good a good first baseman, you're always thinking, expect a bad throw. I knew a bad throw was coming here, but I did think, what if, he, like, right before he throws it, I'm like, if I drop it, don't miss this pick. Oh my god, because like, it'll be two runs right scored, now. two nothing in the in game one and game three in St. Louis. This place will come down if I miss this. So, bro, sure enough, the play starts happening. Dean goes up the middle, makes a great play to his left, spins and throws, and throws me one of the hardest picks. <laughs> of my entire life. Now listen, bro, as a first baseman, you got one of two choices. You can be aggressive to the pick, that's usually the play, or you can sit back to get a hop. There was no hop here, dude. It was like do or die, have to go get it, or or like, you know, it, 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 there's gonna be two runs by me. So bro, it's coming and I swear, I swear to God, Talk about overcoming your fear. Like you have, like this is the same thing in life. Like you see something, you gotta uh, just go for it. So I saw it, and I was like, "It's a pick, and it's not an easy one. I gotta just sell out, bro. I sell out, freaking pick it. I'm like, uh, let's go, baby. Unbelievable, uh, incredible, uh, dude. Uh, two two outs, two questions. Bases loaded, yeah. One, you get into the dugout. Like, what does Leland say? Like, does it like like what was it like walking running into the dugout, making that play? Oh, saving oh dude, everyone points. was like, dude, great pick. Ian was like, oh, great pick, great pick, great. Pick. You know, everyone was like, great Did pick. That like, relax like I, you, like you felt better, or do you? Well, you yeah, about whenever Buffer? you make a Buffer. whenever you make a play like that, dude, in the first inning, you're like, all right, the nerves settle a little bit. You're like, you're like now you're in the game, but dude, it, it's so heightened. It's tough to explain. It, it, you could only understand it if you've been there. Oh, if you I got a question. It. I got a question. Yeah. Do you, when I, this is a stupid thing. I, I like, in my, I go back to like when I played football in high school, like if I would go yeah. out for a pass and a guy would throw it, everything got quiet. Like I didn't yeah. hear anything. When like Guillen goes in a hole, do you hear anything? Like, what do you hear as a professional athlete when there's 50,000 screaming people and the actual thing is happening to you? Do you, you know what I'm Bro. saying? Do you understand my well, question? Well, uh, yeah, yeah. I got, I, I, I know exactly what you're saying. You're so locked into that moment. I really didn't hear much. I just knew I needed to like focus on the ball. I needed to get my mind into a, you know, aggressive mentality of no fear. Go make, you've, you've made this pick a million times. Go make it now in the world series game one bases loaded. Like go. So I must admit before the Is play it happened, slow motion, does it happen before, in slow motion? It wasn't slow motion, but before the play happened, I, I must admit some nerves did hit me because I knew he was not going to hit me in the chest. Oh my God. And then I, <laughs> as it was going, I had to say, okay, let's go be aggressive to the pick. Go, go do what you know how to do. I'm going to tell you a quick story, bro, that, you know, I've told probably back in the day, but it's worth telling again, because, <clears throat> because it's right on the topic you're saying. So game five, game five, <clears throat> there's two outs and there's one out in the ninth and I'm coming up facing Adam Wainwright. He's closing, right? Wainwright's mm -hmm. closing. Mm -hmm. And I come up against him and, you know, we talk about the world series and the atmosphere and, you know, and talk about nasty as a closer. He was nasty. Dude. He was 98, 98 mm -hmm. with a, a nasty curveball changeup. Oh. So he had like, he had starter stuff, but, but a nasty closer. Yeah. And he was 23 years old, 22. Yeah. So, you know, when I look back at this, man, I, I, I look at, the, I tell this story now from the lens of of you know the me versus me concept of okay <clears throat> i come up there's one out in the, in the ninth st louis is two outs away from winning the world series and i'm thinking to myself i'm not the, i'm not gonna be the second out here like you're gonna have to go to hell with me right here <laughs> yeah. seriously we're gonna we're gonna have to go to hell together before you get me out right and I remember getting there, first pitch, he throws me a fastball. I think I swing and miss. It starts to get a little loud in the, in the crowd. Yeah. Second pitch, I think he throws me a changeup. I swing and miss again, bro. I remember stepping out, Chinch, in St. Louis. The roar of this crowd was so deafening, dude. It, it started to ring my ears. So I, I stepped out, and I was like, why are my ears ringing? Oh, my God. Like, I, I, I've never heard a roar like this in my life. And I remember, like... I remember being like almost intimidated for a second, right? And so I think of it this way when I look back. 
the roar of that crowd, 60,000 people, 60,000 people uh, ringing my ear I can't imagine. In, a, in a deafening way. And all I could hear was their voices. All I could hear was their voices. And then all of a sudden, bro, I said to myself, you got this. Because I always think of this, you don't rise, you don't rise to the occasion, you sink to your level of training and habits. You don't rise to, hey, rise to the occasion. You don't just rise to the occasion. You sink to your level of training and habits. Mm. And the voice in my head started to overpower the 60,000 people, seriously, and the millions of people watching. But the 60,000 people that were ringing my ears for a second ago, the voice of my head growing up saying to myself, no, 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 you got this. You've taken the swings since you were 14 years old, right? You've lifted the weights. You've read the books. You've done the meditations. You have the perspective. You know the process. Get back in the box as you versus you. Make Adam Wainwright a pitching machine. Slow the game down like you've done a million times before because you've trained for this moment and your habits are so good and your routines have been so good. Get in that box and go dominate. And the next pitch, I remember he threw me a curveball down and I took it and I got the one, two. I was like, okay. I stood out and got back to my process that I've been doing since I was 15, 16 years old. Stuff I learned from Harvey Dorfman, the, all the training that I did in the cages by myself, night after night at University of Richmond. And right, I get back in the box, I step out, I go through the process, deep breath. Harvey told me, breathe or die, get back in the box, boom. I step in the box, okay, I'm gonna hunt the heater. He's just throwing me a heater, to ch a curveball changeup. I'm going to hunt the fastball, look middle away, react in. Bam, he throws me a heater up and away. I get him 2-2. Two, two. I don't hear anyone anymore. All I hear is my, my voice. My voice is the only one talking to me. It's incredible when I look back at this. Those 60,000 people that are still raging, bro. It's the most incredible party you've ever seen from these people. I don't see any. All I see is Adam Wainwright. I get back to 2-2. Two, two. I take a deep breath because I know my training, my, my process, I've mastered it. I understand that it works if I work it, right? It's me versus me at this time. I step out, deep breath. I get back in, hunt the fastball, look middle way, react in. Bam, Wainwright throws me a changeup in the dirt, 3-2. I was like, I got him. When I got back to 2-2, I knew I had him. When I got back to 3-2, I got him. I got him right where I went. Now, he, now he's a rookie, and he's missing bad. Now, he doesn't know as a veteran – I know when you miss bad, you're nervous. You don't want to. You don't want to make a bad pitch. So you're 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 not just missing. You're missing bad. So and I know in 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 my inner trust of myself, right? That's what confidence is, right? I trust myself so much to know that like I've been here before, right? So I come back. I step out three two. He throws me a ninety eight mile an hour heater. I hit the hardest ball I think I've ever hit in my life. Rocket. Right over the second baseman's head, it ends up hitting the wall. Bam! Ricochets the corner. I get a double, you know, get on second base or whatever. But I go back to that at bat because I think that's a – I think that a bat for me in the World Series and what it meant and the, and the voices, the voices. How many times do we hear other people's voices telling us who we, who we should be and, and, and how we should live our life, how we should do this? But the whole point of – you don't rise to the occasion. You sink to your level of training and your habits and routines. And so I think about that. Like, we have to tell our own stories. We have to have our own perspectives. We have to trust ourselves. We have to do the work so that when we get into situations that are tough at times in life, we got to look at ourselves and say, I got this. I got this. So, bro, I just tell you that story because I look back at that time in the World Series and I, that at bat for me, of all my bats in my career, might have been my favorite at bat because I'd never heard, a, 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 I never heard a ringing in my ears like that from sixty thousand people, and was able to get myself back into the moment. Dude, you get the, you get the applause for that, dude. <laughs> I, I've heard that story before, but I've never heard you tell it like that. I'm shaking right now. I'm like trembling <laughs> right now. That was unbreaking. <laughs> Incredible, man. Look, Stu got Incredible. so fired up. See Stu over here? Stu. Goes, Stu, like, you're loving it too. Stu, about? stay in the moment, Stu. <laughs> stay in the moment. <laughs> so I love oh, I love I love I love that one word too. I just want to say the last thing. Arte. 
you know, we talk right. about in, her, in heroic, you know, Brian Johnson was on our podcast, talked about mm -hmm. he lives by Arte. He has a tattoo. My buddy Brandon Geyer has a tattooed on his arm too. Being the best version of yourself moment by moment by moment, right? So all day long, what if we all lived in Arte to be the best moment yourself moment by moment by moment? When I go back to that at bat, it was like, all right, man, the only choice you have at this moment, because everybody wants you to fail that's in this place right here. The only choice you have is to be the best version of yourself from your training and your habits in this moment, in this next pitch. That's it. Damn, Case. So I'm glad we retaped because we didn't have this <laughs> before. And that was, I've heard that story before. That was the best you've ever told it. And then Thanks, it dude. Close. Dude, you were in it. Yeah, I could yeah. see in your eyes, you were looking at Wainwright. Oh, yeah. dude, wait, by the way, I have a great, that reminds me, I, I, I wanted to like lay out for that because I didn't want to interrupt this amazing thing that you just said <laughs> but so a quick Wainwright story so it's a 2014 all-star game yeah. remember I used to run around the field with Harold you oh, did yeah, yeah. You, you and I did oh, yeah. you after, yeah, I did. Like, yeah I did it yeah yeah so I'm in the outfield I'm in the outfield it's me and Harold and like wait I gotta pull up this roster where's the pitchers it was like I know this for a fact it was uh R.I.P. uh Doc Holliday was standing there um who was the uh who was the Wainwright before Wainwright? Huge dude, huge pitcher. Israel Israelhausen. No, 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 no. The other guy. No, shaved head. No, starter. Oh, uh Chris Carpenter. Chris Carpenter. Okay. Yeah. And then uh one other like superstar ace. Okay. And you remember like Al Leiter is always on, like he's like, hey, tell yeah. him this, tell him that, tell him this. Yeah. So he yeah. we Harold had a ball in his hand, and it's three of the greatest pitchers of all time. And I'm standing next to him, Harold. Gives the ball and he's like, "Hey, Doc, show me your cutter or whatever." And then he's like, "Hey, uh, this guy, show me this, whatever." And we're standing there and these guys are all fired up and they're all excited, whatever. And and all of a sudden, like you hear in the background after the segment was over and they're all like high fiving. Wayne Wright go, didn't want to see any of my pitches, H. And, we came <laughs> around, and he was standing there. He just happened to be standing two feet behind. And Harold didn't. Harold didn't bring him into the conversation. I'll never forget. It was like we laughed so hard. Obviously, he was a kid. Dude. Kidding. He's a great guy. A great dude, guy. He, the Wayne Wright is super such a guy. funny, great guy, dude. Super yeah, great guy. Yeah, like, just, he, he's a guy you, know, you root for. It's funny. Like he wasn't like the super superstar yet, but like that year, he wound up having like one of his best years, and the rest of his career was a freaking uh, like. He would have been the guy that Harold ran up to asking how do you throw your pitches, but yeah, that was, that oh, was... it's incredible, dude. That's so great. All right, well, <laughs> so great, great story, dude. You make me feel better about not recording earlier. Um, <laughs> uh, I have another, one other fun thing to do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this this man, I didn't even know we were gonna go this. Oh, you're. I know who you're gonna think. Here's what the fun we're gonna do. I got the on Ranker.com celebrity fans for each of these teams, the Astros. And the Phillies. Okay. Uh, do you want me to go one team by team? <laughs> or do you want to go back and forth? Let's go team by team. Let's go team okay. by team. And okay. then at the end, you tell me who has better fans. Okay. Right. Now, <laughs> celebrity you know, fans. Celebrity fans, yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. There's this guy, Christian Wood. I've never heard of him. I'm sorry. Roflo, oh. Robert Flores. He's a big fan of the Oh, Astros. that's true. Robert Flores. <laughs> Russell Westbrook, Astros fan. Dwight yeah. Howard, Astros fan. I'm going to keep scrolling here. Michelle Beadle, ESPN lady, is an Astros fan. I got one for you here. This one's going to get your attention. Ric Flair. Astros fan? Astros fan. Let's really? That's, that's random because he's uh, from Charlotte. He's from Charlotte. No, we didn't attend any more did, you, did you see Jalen Hurts? Is that true that he wore an Astros hat and shirt yes, to the press dude, What was it doing? Dude, have a feel, bro. Have a feel, dude. I, 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 well, it's like, remember LeBron back in the day wore a Yankees, Yankees hat, hat to the uh, to Indians the World Yankees. Series or something? Like, dude, have a feel. Have a feel. Uh, do that. Jalen Hurts. Do so, that. like, a perception's reality. Just don't, you can tell your buddies you're yes. an Astros fan, but don't yeah, wear it to like a going out of your way to be a dick. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wilmer Valderrama, you know him, right? That 70s show. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He also, a lot of basketball players. Tracy McGrady, that makes sense. George H.W. Bush. Oh, bro, I got a great story real quick. I got a great story. About George H.W. Bush? Yes, yes, okay, let's, yes. Let's get after who, it. Who, that's, that's senior, right? That's senior? Yes, that's senior. Bro, incredible. <laughs> At the old Minute Maid Park or whatever, whenever I'd come on deck there, 
George H.W. Bush and Barbara had their seats right next right to the on-deck circle. Yeah, next so I think to, it was Nolan a, Ryan too, right? Yeah, he was there too. No, no he wasn't right there. He was, oh, he no one was behind the dish. Oh, okay. So, bro, I'd come out to the on-deck circle and I'll never forget it, man. I, I was like so nervous. I'm like, oh my gosh, the president. And I walk out and there's Barbara and I, I looked at him, you know me, I'm not shy about anything. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, uh, I'm like, hey, Mr. President, <laughs> How's it going? Did you? <laughs> swear to God. <laughs> I can't I'm like, you do that. I, swear to God. I walked out. I'm, like, I'm so nervous, but I'm like, I don't care, dude. You guys are not the president anymore. And freaking guy's a stud. But I'm like, hey, Mr. President, how's, how's it going? He's like, how you doing today, Sean? I'm like, let's Whoa. go, baby. <laughs> I'm like, this guy knows my name. Yeah, he's like, how you doing, Sean? I'm like, woohoo. One of the coolest things ever. And then, dude, wow. so that was for years. He would always be at games. And, like, we be, kind of became buddies. In 2004 at the All-Star Game in Houston, he comes in the clubhouse, bro. He comes around. Swear to God, it's incredible. So he's coming around, Secret Service, blah, blah, blah. He, he stops at my locker. He's like, what's up, uh, Sean? How you doing? I said, hey, Mr. President, how's it going? Great to see you again. How's Barber doing? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I swear to God. No, I swear. Chitch, listen to this story. It's incredible. So he's like... So nine, so obviously his son, George Bush, George W. Bush. I'm familiar. Junior. Yeah. George W. is, he's getting crushed at our country in this, by our country at this time for the war in Afghanistan or whatever's happening at that time. His, you know, his approval rates were very low. And I, dude, I I went into a conversation with H.W. I was like, man, I was like, as I, I swear to God, I'm like, as a dad, I was like, how does it make you feel about your son getting kind of crushed? But I swear to God, and he's like, dude, we had this like legit conversation. He's like, well, you know what, Sean? He's like, as a dad, you never want to see your son struggling or like not feel in a, in a good place. So it's been tough for his mom and I, you know, to kind of watch, but he's a tough guy. He'll get through oh it. He's a leader. God, I'm like, so he walked away. I'm like, this is incredible. I, I'm like, is this my life? I'm like, hang on, hang on a sec. Like, how the hell did this happen that I'm freaking – talking to George H.W. Oh. Bush and at the All-Star game in 2004. And here comes Muhammad Ali right behind him. Right behind him is Ali. You know, I got the boxing gloves oh right God. there, Ali's boxing gloves. So, dude, so, like, literally, that was so cool. I talked to H.W., and then here comes Ali. He's got Parkinson's, but he's kind of throwing punches. <laughs> and Incredible. Unbelievable. All right. Oh, yeah, this took a turn, but I'm glad I did this. All right. Then is Quaid, also an Astros fan. Simone Biles. Yeah. Travis Scott. I'm not very familiar with his music, but he's pretty good. Popular. Yeah. Matthew McConaughey. Okay. Yeah, love McConaughey. Yeah, me too. All right. Let's go to oh no. I gotta write this down again. Celebrity Phillies fans. All right. Who would you guess? Can you guess any right now? Probably not. Bradley wow. Cooper is Bradley Cooper. Dude, I, I was just gonna how do you know that? Because I just I think he's from Philly. Oh yeah, with that that. Silver Remember he did that playbook? show. Remember that movie he did. He did? Silver Linings Playbook. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's yeah. her name? The. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the X Men girls. All right, good job there. Oh, that's the only one that came up here. What? No, dude. Not there's the gotta be Philly, Philly celebrities. Uh, let's go. Oh, here. Uh, famous Phillies fans. Oh, I got Reddit here. Reddit doesn't fuck around, man. All right, <laughs> give it to me. Oh. Uh, no, no, this is dicey. It's a dicey. This is a dicey Reddit chain. I just wound up on. I gotta get off of that. Why can't I see celebrity Phillies fans? I had it. And There's I... Bradley Cooper. I got. I got it right here. Oh, you got Bradley it? Cooper. Bradley Cooper's one. Oh, fr- oh, this is one of those things where you, it's so annoying. You have to hit oh, next, okay, and then I got them. I got it takes them. you to a porn site or something. Like, <laughs> no, that's what happened. When I went, that Reddit chain got dirty. I didn't know where I was going there. This right, is Rob McElhaney from yeah. uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh yeah, David, yep. David Beckham. Nice. Why is he? I don't know. Oh, very good friend of uh, Ryan Howard. Oh, Will Will Smith. I mean, I got the same list you do now. Uh, David Beckham was in the stands for Roy Halladay's no hitter. Oh, really? Wow. Will Smith. Boo. Tina Tina Fey. Fey. Tina Fey. I like Tina Fey. Who is this guy? Who's Hafner Borston? I don't know. I was just looking at. How do you spell that? Oh, oh. Was this guy in Game of Thrones? Oh, he's the mountain. Oh, he's the mountain. He's the mountain in Game of Thrones. Guy's a killer. <laughs> That's all they got on that list. All right. There's more than that. There's got to be, dude. There's got to be. That's a terrible be more list. Than that. 
Wait, hold on. Let's My try. buddy Marty Miller, who's the director of WWE, he's a Phillies fan. I don't know if he's famous or not, but. <laughs> Wait, I'm, I'm looking more. Uh, yeah, no. My buddy Mike Morrissey, I don't know. A lot of Philly fans out there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, John Crook, man, he told some stories about those Philly teams back in the day. Oh, that, oh dude. He, sure you... I'll, I'll, I'll give, I'll try to give a couple PG ones. One, uh, he said, well, I'll just give this one because I don't even think I could tell some of the stories about those Phillies teams that he told us. But he said they partied harder after they lost. He guarantees, and, and when I say party, I mean probably like letting off steam. Right. They stayed in the Toronto, the, the Joe Carter Homer. They stayed in their locker room until like nine o'clock the next morning. <laughs> I'm the entire sure they team. Did. He said they were just drinking beers in a shower. They were just like standing. <laughs> I'm sure they did. Depressed. That's a, that's a big man thing, huh? Stand in a shower and drink beers together. Yeah. Naked. Yeah. Yeah. Naked. Yeah. It's fun to do. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with John Crux's body. You're like, hey, Crux, have you, have you, have you mixed in a, a weight at any point in your life? Oh, my God, dude. Okay. So great. <laughs> dude, we got a lot out of this. We did yeah, this. Yeah, man. Twice. We, you we guys made it. This is the first one, but we did it twice. <laughs> I think the second one was better. You know what's funny? I listened. I told you yesterday I dropped a Bill Burr, but I listened to Bill Burr. Dude, he does two a week just by himself yeah. for an hour. First of all, an hour by an himself. Hour. He talks yeah, for an hour. It's, it's He's unbelievable. He's so good, though. He's so, He's so good. good. I love Bill Burr. So funny and so smart. But yeah. every, I would say, six episodes, like, it'll, like, cut, and then he'll come back and be like, motherfucker! <laughs> and whatever. And he forgets to press record, like, once every three weeks. And oh my like god dude a half hour and forget about you and me talking to each other he'll be like a half hour in by himself and realize he didn't record on his thing oh my god that's, that's only so happened funny. to us you know this is only the second time this has happened in 137 episodes it's i know funny. dude we you know it's so funny though i think we talked about it the other day we talked about it and then, i almost forgot to record and, the other day no but we talked about it. yeah i think that's what it was and yeah. then you said that and like oh dude we're good remember that one time we did it back when yes blah 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 and then so we cool. did it today so yeah. well, well dude, dude, we nailed it though bro that's a lot of fun yeah. great 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 stuff great going down memory lane of the world series bro these guys tomorrow they're gonna freaking yeah. absolutely have some of the best memories of their life i can't wait can't wait yeah. all right buddy all right, bro. Love you, Chichi. Love you, buddy. Talk have a great you. rest of the day. Everybody out there, have a great, 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 great day. Let's go.